WNST, Towson, Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. I got my bow tie on. We are uh, here in Los Angeles at Radio Row. You know, I didn't know that I'd see this guy. I, I, I told my wife when I left, I said, you know what? I'm going to see people I like. We might be wearing masks. Some of us might not be wearing masks, but I'm going to see people I like. And uh, I'm going to have some radio. And I don't know if it's going to be the best radio in my career. But either way, I figured there'd be some actors. And you're now wearing the same headset that Joe Montaigne was wearing. <laughs> moments. You're almost in the Godfather 3. You're almost in the 3 Amigo. You're almost a 4th Amigo. Howard Balzer joins us here. You know, I would say Sports Exchange or Sporting News when I was a kid. Or Sporting News Radio. At one point, uh, my, my colleague... What are you doing, man? You're out in the desert. You drove over here from Arizona. Yeah, I yeah? did. I drove from Arizona. It was a, not a bad five-and-a-half-hour drive, although four hours of it is all through desert. But, yeah, it was a ni nice drive. Does your skin and dry out like a lizard? My skin's, like, dry. It, it, dri like, it dries a little. I'm li bloody. My knuckles are bloody. I, <laughs> I, got, I got hotel skin therapy going on out here, you know? I think my skin's been pretty much impervious. Super uh, Bowl in Las Vegas. I'm going to get a skincare sponsor. Somebody get somebody down at the Inner Harbor, there and I'm going to bring out lotion for everybody. Definitely. Because you're going to need it. There's no doubt about that. So you're in Phoenix these days, and, you know, my heart for you as the longtime St. Louis person, I, I know I had you on the show about two months ago, and I told you I flew into St. Louis to see the Stones, first night of the tour. Screwed my back up on that trip. It was a mess. And I had no idea that the, the Cronkies were – I knew they would be making money and they'd be playing this game in their stadium and all that. I got to get some emotion from you, dude, because, like, <laughs> I lost my football team when I was 15. You're infamous, intimately familiar with that. Yes. You were around when all that happened. You were at the first drawing of the Indianapolis Colts and all the Jeff Georges and Steve Entmans and Baldinger tells me those stories, and so does Rick Venturi. But um, – this is this has got to be difficult for you, right? This changed your life. This, this yeah, it, move. Did. it changed it cha a lot of people's. It changed lives. a lot of people's lives. Uh, no, no doubt about it. And I saw Sam Farmer too, and I told, I reminded him that it changed his life. So <laughs> I remember he was the desperate old guy looking for the football team, and yeah. now look at it, right? So and, and it's, it's 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 I it's funny too because and and it, it kind of gets rubbed in a little bit, Ness, when not so much that the Rams are winning, but the way they're winning, because you hear them say, well, you know, we're, we're all in. We're all in. Well, shouldn't all teams be all in? And I'm not saying that all teams should be trading all their direct number one picks for different players and all that, but all, all teams should be all in as much as possible. Well, this might be to different two years, and they might be 5-12 and 12 Well, you now. never know. You never know. But the point is they, were, they, they certainly understand Kroenke's ownership in St. Louis were never even close to all in. And, in fact – when they hired Jeff Fisher as the head coach in 2012, it was with the express intent of getting a coach who had navigated a move of a team from one city to another. Because Fisher, of course, had been with the Houston Oilers when they moved to Tennessee. Well, he, he coached them in the Sugar Shack down there in the Memphis. Yeah. They would fly yeah, exactly. in and yeah. change and, their and clothes in the, in the balcony or right. the, the, the bowels of uh, Liberty Bowl. I was at one of those games. Part of the interview of Jeff Fisher was asking him and talking about what, what is involved with making a move and all that. So that was done with that intent. And so they weren't trying to win. Kevin Demoff had a famous quote, the club president, or whatever his title is now, he had a famous quote that actually their last year in St. Louis, they won a few games at one point, and they weren't a real good team, but they weren't horrible during Fisher's years, but they were mediocre, and they won a few games, and it looked like, hey, they might compete for a playoff spot. And then they lost like three or four in a row, and Demoff actually said at one point that – it was good that we were lo we lost because then we could concentrate on the other things that we were working on. I mean, how do you come out and say stuff like that? And then the funny part that really rubs it in is the all-in stuff, which, oh, Les Steed, look at all the moves he made. Well, does it really take a genius general manager to trade all your draft picks for Jalen, if, when a guy's available for Jalen Ramsey or for Matthew Stafford? or to, to Von Miller or to sign Odell Beckham Jr.? That doesn't take a lot of genius to bring those guys to your football team. Well, especially when so, you're in L.A. and you're trying to sell this. Well, yeah, that's what, exactly. And that's, been their, that's why they had to go all in, because they knew what a tough market it was. But they didn't, they didn't call it that when they were making the move. Let's remember, when they were trying to get the league to approve it, they were saying, hey, 
we're going back to L.A. It's a legacy franchise. The, the, the fan base is there. They said that. Right. Well, what did Demoff say last week after half the stadium at least was 49ers fans? It said it showed us how, how much work we have to do even after six years of being here to develop a fan base. So they admitted that they don't have the fan base. I mean, it's, it's, they have some fans. Don't get me wrong. I, they're, I, but dude, they're Chargers play here. There are no Chargers fans here. Right. And there's barely Rams fans. But exactly. Howard so, Balzer is here. Anyway. He, he now lives in Phoenix. And, and I want to give your whole story because, like, if people are new to the show or just tuning in and don't know who you are, I was reading you when I was a boy. But more than that, you're a Philadelphia guy who wound up in St. Louis at Sporting News and then lost the team, attracted a team, the thing climbed the mountain. Kurt Warner's sitting over here right, right. now. I saw Tory Holt over here, right? Um, and – then watched it off. I mean, you, you've lived five lifetimes in this yes. Jim Hart, Cardinals, you know, <laughs> Jim Hannafin, uh, you know, all of that for St. Louis. And you swore to me five years ago, you're like, they broke the law, they're going to get sued, they're right. going to... Yep. And then you have a couple, a handful of lawyers in St. Louis basically sell the city down the river. Well, I don't, I, don't, I don't think it was the more I've thought about it and talked to people. I don't think it was the, the attorneys that did. I, I think it was the, the – because the attorneys worked for the city. Or, or when you say the city, the, the attorneys worked for the entities in St. Louis, whether it's the mayor, the county executive, and those people. They were working for them. They were the ones that wanted – this thing settled and they were the ones that figured hey let's let's take the money and run and don't take a chance everybody's at- trying to get the nfl to discovery right including congress oh, yeah, yeah, at this exactly. point. and they and they and they were in discovery and that's why the nfl desperately wanted this thing to go away because they knew that the discovery was going to come out in open court and what was dis- what was just dis- quote discovered in discovery were a lot of the things that i knew that had happened that i had told people in the media about but no one touched it no one would even cover it but you know that's you know that's that's the that's the way of the world, but it's you know it was, just, it was it was just the way it is. But like you said, it changed a lot of people's lives, and and so and that, that and that was the thing that made people bitter is that they had to trash the city to make the move happen, and that St. Louis was collateral damage. And you know one thing you didn't mention, you know lost a team, gained a team. You know, did the, well, you know what? We were right there with you guys in Baltimore during the expansion process, thinking we were going to get a team. And and that one didn't happen. A big booster to my career. And, and by the way, way and, and, and by the way, and by the way, Kroenke was behind the, losing the losing the expansion team. And that's that's another story. Little entirely. known fact: Stan the fan was on the radio then, and he was the biggest star in sports radio in 1992, 93, 94. He was convinced that Anheuser Busch. He was also Coors Light sponsored. He was convinced that Anheuser Busch was at the heart of the St. Louis thing, right? So when, remember, Charlotte got the first team, and then we right. all we groveled. You, Memphis, Jacksonville, everybody's groveling, right? But the word was that there was a one-team release because the league was being held up by Anheuser-Busch to some degree, who was a huge sponsor at that time, that Anheuser-Busch wanted a team back in St. Louis, and they were giving St. Louis. You had ownership issues there, right? I mean, there, Oh, yeah. yeah well, there there, was there one, were, and that's Clayton, where Crocky. Clayton, was that the name? Was the name of the, what was the name of the people? that Jerry Clinton. 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 And he, and he Clinton. was never going to be Thank the main you. owner because he didn't have the money, and he needed, he needed partners to pull it off. And they had James, James Bush Orthwine, who had been part of – the Bush family and Anheuser Busch and all that. He was going to be the owner, and then he backed. I wound up with a fifteen-year ba- Budweiser sponsorship oh, well, because of that. So okay. I just want to let you know. Okay, well, like, well literally, he, so he backed out. My career. He he backed out of it, of being the and owner. And Jacksonville gets the team. We and both Jackson, wound up holding the bag. But here's yeah, right. But here's the crazy part of the story is that they gave St. Louis another month after Charlotte was picked to get the ownership, their ownership act together. And that's when Kroenke came riding in on what everyone thought was going to be the white her- horse and save it and be the owner, and he was going to be. And when they, when they went to Chicago for the league meeting, here's the kind of untold sp- part of the story, is that that Jerry Clinton, who was a local beer distributor, when they got, when they got the, st- the, uh, the stadium built, which was an extension of the convention center, he had a... Two-year personal, he controlled the lease 
in the stadium for a football team for two years. The TWA Dome. The T- then the TWA Dome, right, right. He controlled the lease. And so when Kroenke came in, he didn't want to deal with Jerry Clinton. He was trying to push Clinton out. All he had to do was have Clinton involved in some way, and that's all Jerry wanted. But he didn't oh, – I'm Stan Kroenke. I'm a billionaire. I don't need some guy who came up from the bad side, bad side of town and is now a beer distributor. I don't need him. So they went to the league meeting. In Chicago in November of that year, and you know what their proposal was to 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 have the team? Their proposal was to play in Bush Stadium for two years, two years, two full seasons until Clinton's lease lease was up. Lease was up, and then they would move into the dome. Well, the real irony in all this was Eric Grubman was a guy in the league office who was. The liaison with all the cities. He lived in Baltimore, by the way. Oh, really? Okay. He was the liaison with L.A., with, with, with the Chargers, with the Raiders, with, with the Rams, with the cities. and all. He was the liaison, right? Well, a guy in that same role back in the 95 expansion, which was going on in the fall of 93, there was a guy in the league office who was filling Eric Grubman's role then, right? And this guy had gotten to know Jerry Clinton and gotten to know the people in St. Louis. And he was very instrumental when they came up to the vote. He says, no, we, 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 we can't just kowtow to these guys, these owners of Stan Kroenke and these guys. They didn't even hardly know Kroenke at the time. We can't kowtow to these guys. They're trying to push Jerry Clinton out, and he was the guy that essentially helped get that stadium built. So, no, we can't do that. Even though he doesn't and, have the money. Right. And they, Well, no, but, but, he needed, but Kroenke did. But, but we can't kowtow, and that's why they picked Jacksonville because – that was, that was just a situation. Well, you, you know who the that guy in the NFL league office was that I've just been referring to a guy? Roger Goodell. Yes. <clears throat> yes. So Goodell knew then what kind of guy Kroenke was. Well, of course, 25 years later or whatever it was, he didn't care. Well, he's the kind of guy that would pay Roger Goodell $44 million a year in well, annual salary, Well, right? and he want, he, he, they wanted his money in, in L.A. And so what they should have done, what they should have done, and I've said this all along, is they should have just, okay, we want your money in L.A. St. Louis shouldn't be collateral damage. Within two years or whatever, we'll come up with a plan to replace the team in St. Louis. But they weren't going to do that. They didn't do that. And now now it's, you know, everyone's saying, well, you should be happy that St. Louis got $790 million. Well, a lot of it's going to the attorneys, but there's also a lot of people saying, well, we don't trust the city and the county to spend it right. Right, and so the the bottom line to it is all is it lost a football team, and who knows now if they'll ever get one again. Howard Balzer is here. Uh, you can find him out in the desert. And tell me about what you're doing. I mean, you you do serious ones. Are you doing all sorts. Yeah, of I do things? some serious. I do do work on Sports Map Radio, uh, uh, which used to be <laughs> back in the day, uh, which used to be one on one radio and Sporting News Radio and Yahoo Radio and SB Nation, and now it's Sports Map Radio. I do some shows with them. Doing some shows this week. I do two weekend shows. You mentioned Sirius. I do a, uh, a website for the Cardinals, publisher of allcardinals.com, which is through Sports Illustrated. So I, uh, I managed to keep myself busy. And even. you drive your way over here to L.A. I, for, for you with this, this is all Goodell and Kroenke's wet dream. Literally. Oh, yeah. Like this, oh, and, totally. Jer- and Jerry Jones. And oh, Jerry totally. Jones. Oh, yeah. But the fact that this game is happening, the fact that the Rams are involved, the fact that the cities. That, that maybe 20 years from now the Rams will be where the Dodgers and the Lakers sort of... Good luck with that. Well, but, but, but you I know, think that the league was always popular here, right? I mean, people watch the game here. They all had different teams. Well, yeah, there's a lot, oh, yeah, there's a lot of NFL fans, but it's also, as we know, a front-running town. Well, we thought it was a Raiders town. And, right? Yeah, well, it, it totally yeah. is. Um, and, but, yeah, but they also wanted, let's remember, NFL honors on Thursday night is at the YouTube Theater, which is on the land around SoFi Stadium. Right. And the press conferences afterwards are in the NFL Media Building, which is NFL Network, which is on Kroenke's land. So this was <laughs> – I mean, and then they're, they're pushing to try to get the combine uh, there, and which would be, to me, just insane for, to have the combine in L.A., just how spread out it is and, and all those things. But who knows if that will happen. At some point, so yeah, that is that is their wet dream. It was a good way of putting it. All right, so uh, get, get a little Ravens uh, for me here. We we had a change in president. You mentioned ownership. I tried to stress to our audience this week, and people were like, "You're stirring it up." Well, Bashadi's owned the team for two decades. The, the The secession plan is for him to sell the team. There's an exit. You know, he's going to sell it to someone at some point. He's not going to die with it. Not going to give it to his kids. Well, but then, he's not. A, but he's not an old guy. 
I don't. Yeah, the, I, I find him to be less active in all of this. Okay. Now, he, he issued a press release on Monday morning, which tells you all you need to know. He's issuing press releases now. He's not taking questions, not being front-facing. The league's not very front-facing anymore. No, that's very I, true. I think that comes from up top. If I speak, you have to speak. If you speak, I have to speak. None of us speak. None of us do anything. We speak through our lawyers, right? I mean, right. That, and statements. That, and, and, and even when you have a 19-year tenured general manager who was beloved by him, the players, everybody, you issue one paragraph about Dick Cash, you hire an African-American team president, you do it at 6 o'clock on a Friday night, the week before Super Bowl week. I, I, I just I, I see things changing in the league, the way the media is, certainly the gambling. I mean, oh. you're in this room right now. <laughs> Everything in this room is gambling. If you or I would have ever been involved in gambling in any way or in, in that heavy a way, we, we would have been thrown out. And now they have million-dollar sets in here with FanDuel. And like all, it, it's an amazing transformation for the league in ideology, but also in not hiring black coaches, in blackballing Colin Kaepernick in plain sight, in Dan Snyder having these emails, and John Gruden and the infighting, and just the fact that this thing is here and what happened to your town involved in it. There's just a lot of dirty poker and being involved in all this money being made. It, it really it, is. It really, no, you're, you're it, 100%. It's, it's, it's awful. As a Baltimore and, person. And, and, but you know what? To them, it doesn't matter. Is, is, it, is, it dir- is it dirty money? They don't care. It's money. And that's, it's, it's all about the revenue. And that's not to say that you shouldn't be in business, obviously, to make as much money as you can. But there also should be a certain, about, a certain amount of accountability for it. And, and to get on this high horse all the time about, oh, we're concerned with pun offs, punts and kick, kickoffs because of player safety, but let's play a 17th game. <laughs> and let's have everybody playing on, you know, every team at some point playing on Thursday night. And let's do this and let's do that. I mean, it's just, it's just crazy. The Pro Bowl. Oh, my goodness. The Pro Bowl. What a, oh, this is an affront to football. It's not football. It's not. Exactly. Exactly. And, and so, it's just a weird, weird dynamic. This is a dangerous thing, this Flores thing, because you, you, you mentioned Demoff and all Les Snead and all these names I haven't thought about in a while, and you, you're like, well, they weren't trying to win. Well, we got a problem like that with baseball in Baltimore. Well, we got a problem in sports with that, right? Yes. We have a problem all throughout sports with this draft system where you are incented to lose, incented so much that, that an owner might get, go to a coach and say, yeah. between you and me, I'll send you and your wife on a really nice right. vacation. And ha- uh, you know, if uh, if – you don't beat the Bengals this week. And, you know? and now, let's piggyback with the gambling. How do you get in bed with the gambling in, Well, get in bed with the gambling industry and know that you're going to have sports books inside stadiums and asking people to bet on the games. And then John Harbaugh is going to get in front of us and have to answer questions about Lamar Jackson's injury status. Right, and they won't even. Give, and we're get, expecting him to be honest. Right, that's right, and they won't even. They won't even give information. On that, hey, with the with the Rams with Kyler Murray, he 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 suffered an ankle injury in that Thursday night game against Green Bay, and they played games with the first couple of weeks whether he's going to be able to play or not. Well, game day decision, blah blah blah, and they never said it was a high ankle sprain. They just said it was a, you know we just knew it was an ankle injury. Well, if anyone knew it was a high ankle sprain, there wouldn't have even been a debate about playing in one of those, especially the first couple of weeks after he got hurt, there wouldn't have been, everyone would have known he's not playing, but they couldn't put that, put that out there. And yet they want people to bet on these games and have, and, and, and have the games have some integrity. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just It's insane. sticky. It's really it sticky. It, it definitely is. Unintended consequences for all of this, right? I mean, for you and I going back 30 years, we're really getting geezy here now, <laughs> but you and I going back 30 years that, that if St. Louis would have had its ish together to begin with, then, then Jacksonville wouldn't have happened, right? Or like, you know, things at Georgia Frontieri would have been stuck in Anaheim for a while, right? right. I, I, Although I think that next on the list at that point was, was Baltimore. Baltimore, yeah. Sure, because we had the most money on the table. John Moog would tell you that. So, uh, you know, the course of the history of all of this, but also the, the Davis family being over in the desert in, in Vegas and making all the money over there. And, you know, th- this stadium game where the West Coast was never going to put stadiums up. Remember that? Oh, yeah. California, you know, well, all of that, right? Yeah, well. well the Arizona Cal- took forever. Well, well it, moved it, the team totally, out there, took them a generation. Well, yeah, that was, yeah, that was <laughs> it. Yeah, they, they <laughs> voted for. So here's St. Louis <laughs> that lost one team. A, 
partially, yes, in fact, because St. Louis couldn't come up with a stadium deal, but they moved somewhere without a stadium deal and didn't get a stadium for 20 years. Temperature game time, 109 yeah, yeah, right. degrees. Yeah. <laughs> And then, so that's that's team one that's Welcome lost. Welcome to your metal bench. And then team <laughs> two is lost when there is a stadium plan, which they end up moving anyway uh, because they want his money in L.A. So what what is that? You know, what what does that say about the way things are? And then they play games with oh, well, the relocation rules aren't really rules. Oh, come on, give me a break. So yeah, it's they just do what they they want to do and they feel they can get away with it and they'll always deny 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 just like with the brian flores charges well there's no merit to it but then they claim they're going to investigate well which is it you know which is it and you know and that's a that's a thing too with the gambling i mean it's just it's just a mess it's a circular mess that but they know it doesn't matter the product's good yeah, well, the I was just gonna, good. right. I, I had someone it's say a to me the other game. By the way, I, I, I had someone wrote a column today. I was reading that said, "Well, maybe the NFL will now eliminate the extra week between the conference championship and the Super Bowl because of all the bad stories last week, and that gives more time for negative stories to come out." Well, okay, they don't want negative stories. Whether it's Flores, whether it's the Washington deal, they don't want those. But they're not going to rush but, a Super Bowl. But, but, yeah, but they it doesn't. Did that once it right, wasn't any good. Right, it doesn't. Right, it doesn't affect the game. Did, did all that stuff that happened last week affect the viewership of the games? No, the viewership was through the roof. Was through the roof, and the reason it was through the roof was because the games were great and they were close. So all that stuff doesn't matter, and and in some perver- you know perverted way, it does keep eyeballs on the sports on the sport talking about it, even when it's a negative story. Howard Balzer's here. He's been covering the National Football League longer, better than just about anybody. He's out in the desert. You can find him. H Balzer, is it seven two one? Seven two one. There you go. See, I know it off the top of my head. That's pretty good. I don't even need the internet for that. Always good to see you. Elbows up, man. Um, you know, I was thinking about you when he's. These criminals got into the game here, but uh, <laughs> the weather is better here than it was in St. Louis. I checked that out. Well, no but, question about that. But by the way, and I want to, I want to thank you um, publicly for the first time because my wife knows I have, I have a problem with Ted Drew's frozen custard, <laughs> and um, this is, this is true. This is true. I booked my flight Sunday on the way out here, and I could have flown through Phoenix, Vegas, you know, no Chicago. I always fly through St. Louis. So you can go in the airport vending machine and get a So I can go to the little yellow Tedrus. machine, find a spoon, <laughs> swipe my $6. I was eating this Heath bar on the plane somewhere over in Nebraska. Oh, my God, it was delicious. So thank you for that. Nothing like Ted Drew. You gave me a gift. No you really doubt gave about me it. a gift, man. No doubt about it. There's a lot of pretenders out there and a lot of imitators. Some good concretes in different cities. But, yeah, Ted Drew's is – one and Just trust me on this. Yeah. When you go to St. Louis, go to Ted Drew's, get some frozen custard. Do you go back? You, you go I, back? Ha- I haven't been yet since we, you know, we, I moved 17 months ago, I think. It was, I, it was in September, so what, October, November, December, January. Yeah, 17 months. Haven't been back yet. I'm I, not, I know there. I will be at some point. I but. flew in. I'm looking at the arch, and I'm like, the, oh, the old mighty miss. By the way, it's snow on the ground from, like, Western Maryland to, like, Nevada. Like, the entire <laughs> country was white underneath, the, you know, and flying over snow fields. Uh, we are in Los Angeles. It's 82 and sunny outside, um, and it's, uh, uh, you It's know, chilly in here. Yeah, it's freezing they really got here. The, they've uh, really got the air coat ramped up. Yes, yeah, so I got three sweatshirts on. I'm wearing the old school. I'm going WNST, old school. We never stop talking Baltimore sports. We're here in Radio Row. It's all brought to you by the Maryland Lottery. Wise conversations. Our friends bring us out here. Uh, and a game day on Sunday with Joe Burrow and uh, Matthew Stafford. Back for more from L.A. and Super Bowl and Radio Row right after this on WNST and BaltimorePositive.com.